Photoshop guru Matt Kloskowski says that blend modes are like opacity on steroids. Make sense? Well, hey there, this is Zunmation. Today we're going to talk about what are blend modes and how to apply them to your images in Photoshop. But before we begin, have you ever used opacity slider before? Hmm? What does it do? It controls the transparency of the current layer, right? So if you decrease the opacity slider, it becomes more and more transparent. If you increase the opacity slider, it becomes opaque. Now, blend modes go a little more crazier. With blend modes, not only you'll be able to control the areas where you want the image to be opaque or transparent, but also you'll be able to control how the image or the layer is being projected over the layer which is beneath it. Besides, you won't believe there's a lot more crazy stuff that you can do. But here's the thing. How many blend modes are there in Photoshop? 27. So are we going to cover all the 27 blend modes? No, let me tell you something. There's only four important blend modes that you'll ever use in the life history of Photoshop. Of course, I lied, there's a couple more, but we are going to discuss four most important blend modes that you'll need in Photoshop and a couple more which I'll mention in this tutorial. And also, I have some awesome examples. I'll show you how that is being applied aside from theory. Stay tuned till the end because at the end, we're going to use multiple blend modes to create awesome stuff inside of Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and by the way, did you notice something different? I actually was heavily sweating in that shirt so I changed it but that's besides the point. So the first blend mode that we are going to talk about is multiply. But before we begin to explain what it is, how it actually works and how to apply it, let's create a new layer. To create a new layer, click on this icon. So this is an image that I downloaded using a plugin called Pexels. Now Pexels allows you to search for free stock photos from inside of Photoshop and it's absolutely free. So if you want to know more about that plugin, so this this is the plugin. If you want to know more about it, go ahead and check out the video right here or here. All right, so create a new layer. To create a new layer, click on this button. And once you click on this button, a new layer will be created. As simple as that. Next, make sure you select the gradient tool. All right, make sure this is selected, linear gradient this is. Then select the gradient from black to white. This might be the third option from here. All right, click on that and uncheck the reverse. Let's make sure it's unchecked okay so it's from black to white now let's create a gradient from black to white so drag from the top to the bottom now you can also press and hold shift to make sure that the line is straight and leave it now let's change the blend mode to multiply so here change it to multiply all right, now what interesting has happened in this? Watch, the areas that were white, watch this, look at the layer thumbnail. The areas that were white have gone completely transparent. The areas that were black remains to be completely opaque. So 100% white is 100% transparent. 100% black is 100% opaque. Think of it this way. Have you ever studied multiplication in elementary school? And do you remember it? Tell me honest, be honest. And if you do, I'm assuming that you do. If you do, you know that anything multiplied by zero is what? Zero. Anything multiplied by one is what? The number itself, right? Now think of black as a zero and think of one as totally white, 100% white, zero is nothing, 100% black, totally dark, one is 100% white, the whitest a screen can go, zero is the darkest a screen can go. Now. Multiply is nothing but just that. When it is black, it's multiplying the background color with it. So anything multiplied by zero is zero. So it's completely black. Anything multiplied by one, since white is one, anything multiplied by one is the number itself. So the colors remain unchanged where we had total white. Now, the grays were somewhere between 0 0.5, so that weight was multiplied by the number and then changed, all right, so it was made a little bit darker. So that's how multiply works. As the name suggests, it simply multiplies and you have to remember that black is zero, white is one. That's pretty much it and that's easy as a pie. All right, so let's delete this layer and let's see how we can use multiply in our images in real life situations. All right, so the first use is to create a vignette very easily. All right, so let's delete this layer and let's create a new layer. 
and this time select the radial gradient okay select this and create a new layer like this now this is just the opposite we wanted white in the middle black at the side so let's go back and make sure you check reverse all right now let's do it all right so as you can see the corners are gray and in the middle we have white so change it to multiply i'm so sorry all right watch we have created what a vignette so there are a lot many uses of using multiply. So let's delete this. Let me show you one more interesting thing. So what if you wanted birds in this image? So I just opened up this image. This has a lot of birds in it. Now, watch this. The background is almost close to white and the birds are black. So if I use multiply here, guess what will happen? The background will become transparent and the birds will remain black. So let's move over just the birds to that image. So let's roughly select the birds, copy it, control C, command C if you're using a Mac, command or control V. All right, so this creates a new layer with that selection. Now change the blend mode to multiply. So as you can see, since the background was not completely white, some of the background is still retained with the birds, but what we can do, we can apply a levels adjustment layer to make the background completely white. Click on this circle gray white icon and select levels. So once you select levels, make sure you press and hold alter option and click on the line between layer one and the levels adjustment layer. So this makes the levels adjustment layer just applicable to the layer that's beneath it. In this case, this is layer one. So drag the slider from the right towards the left watch it completely vanishes away. Isn't this amazing? Now select this layer and resize it, do whatever you want. Now you have the birds in this image. Isn't that interesting? So that was multiply. Remember, black is zero, white is one, and multiply just multiplies those numbers with the colors and the tones which are beneath that particular layer. So let's move on to the next blending mode and this will be... I just forgot. All right, so the next blending mode that we're gonna talk about is screen. Think of screen like this. Screen is just the opposite of multiply. Just exactly the opposite. So let's create a new layer, create that gradient again, and do that again. Now, if I apply a screen, all right, let's change it to linear. Ah, uh, okay, okay, just ignore what I did. All right, change the normal to screen. Now watch, it just did the opposite. It's making the areas that are 100% black, completely black, transparent. It makes the areas which are completely white, opaque. So that's what it does. Just remember the complete opposite of multiply. So this can be very essential in placing objects that have a black background that you would like to remove. For example, I have a logo. So let's just import that. Let's see this. Let's import a logo. Open. Let's open a logo. You know the PixImperfect logo, right? All right. So control A, control C, control V. Let's paste it here. Command A, command C, command V if you're using a Mac. Then change the blend mode to screen. Watch. The black things go away. Now, I can transform it, Control T, a Command T if you're using a Mac. Let's make it a little smaller. And yes, let me give you a pro tip. So, up until now, if you were transforming, you were pressing and holding Shift, and it transforms in proportion. But what if you wanted to transform from center? Press and hold Shift and Alt, or Shift or Option if you're using a Mac, and then transform. It transforms from the center. Isn't this amazing? Sometimes you want to do that when you want to place objects in the center of the image. All right, let's place it somewhere in the corner and press enter. So there you go. You can do this with almost any image that has a black background. Suppose in this example, if you wanted to add smoke into this image, so I downloaded a smoke photo with a black background. So let's just import that file open. Let's just import that. All right, so this is a smoke image and I wanna control A, control C and let's paste it over this and change the blend mode to screen. Watch, now we have real smoke coming out of this uh, door or window door actually. So isn't this amazing? So you can distort it if you want. So let's distort it, right? So, so of course you can go ahead and create a mask and delete the areas where the door ends, take a brush and paint with black where the door ends or and you can do lots of crazy stuff, but that's for some other tutorial. But this is what the basics of 
screen tell you so this is more coming out of the door you can always control the opacity decrease the flow just a little bit and make this a little opaque take black and make this a little opaque and just a little opaque so let's not go in depth into it so that's what screen does screen is the complete opposite of multiply it treats white as one and black as zero so if you cannot remember those numbers all you need to remember is that just the opposite of multiply and the next blend mode that we're going to talk about is and this time i remember it is soft light so let's get into it so we are back to the original image and i've again created that gradient and this time let's change the blend mode to soft light now watch what it does watch now the areas that were black it has darkened those areas the areas that were white it has brightened those areas but watch look at the middle the areas that were gray it has made it completely transparent so here's how soft light works the areas that are exactly 50% gray it makes those areas transparent it makes the black areas darker it makes the white areas lighter in a way you can say that this is increasing contrast that's what contrast does, right? It keeps the middle in the middle, brighten the areas that are bright, darken the areas that are dark. And that's exactly what soft light is doing. Now, how would you practically use soft light? There are a couple of things, a couple of ways how you can practically use it. So let's go ahead and delete this and let's create a copy of this sample layer and change the blend mode to soft light. So automatically you increase the contrast. So if you think the contrast is too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity. So one of the ways of using it is increasing contrast, but of course you have contrast adjustment layers. Why would you use it? There's another way, and this is for increasing sharpness. All right, so let's go ahead and let's change it back to normal and watch what I do. Let's go to filter. Other, high pass. Now what high pass does is, let's zoom in, let me show you what high pass does. What high pass does is that it makes everything 50% gray, but the edges. The edges, it enhances. The edges, it brightens and darkens according to the color you have in the original image. So as you can see, the edges have been pronounced and you can control the radius to control where the edges are what do you want to consider as the edges so if you go overboard like 31 the edges will be kind of soft so if you go too low the noise will become the edge so you need to find a happy place where actually the edges are pronounced all right so this is a fine number 2.7 click ok and change the blend mode to soft light watch so this is before this is after so this has become a little bit more sharpened. So before, after. All right, isn't this amazing? Now, since most of the areas were 50% gray, they became transparent and the areas and the edges were, look, they were brightened or darkened to make the edges pronounced and hence increase the sharpness. So let's look at it, ha look, it looks as if I am just enhancing the outline of the image so let's open another image that actually requires sharpening so this is the image that i took and v obviously wants some sharpening in her fur so to do that make a copy of the background layer and make sure before you apply the high pass filter you change it to a smart object so that you can change the radius later so right click on it and change it to smart object and convert to smart object click on it and then go to filter other high pass now, tune into a value where the edges are pronounced, but still, there's an advantage that you have since you converted this into a smart object, whatever value you have, so let's select a random value and click OK and change it to soft light. Now, as you can see, the sharpness has been increased, but if you are not satisfied with this, you can always go ahead, double click on the high, high pass, sorry, high pass, and change the values of radius to see which is working for you all right so i think this value six or five is working for me 
nicely. Just so you know, soft light is the blend mode that is used in dodging and burning. If you don't know what dodging and burning is, it's just brightening and darkening certain areas of the image to give it dimension. So have a look, let me do it very quickly for you. So in this image, the face as you can see is fairly flat, so I want to add dimension to it. So let's create a new layer and I'm doing it very quickly just to show you how it actually works. Take the brush, pick the brightest area of the face, then make it more brighter and sometimes a little more desaturated and then simply paint over the areas that are already bright. So let's make the brush a little bit smaller. To make the brush smaller, all you have to do, press and hold Alter Option and right mouse button and drag it to the left to make it smaller, drag it to the right to make it bigger. So let's make it a little smaller and change the flow to around say five, okay? And start painting over the areas that are bright. So we are giving it a dimension. But as you can see that the colors are very plain, it's not re looking realistic. Why? Because we haven't changed the blend mode. So change the blend mode to soft light. All right, let's look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. So we added some dimension to it. So you can go ahead, paint as much as you want. So I painted with a little lighter color, then you can paint with darker color over the darker areas. It adds a little bit of dimension. So that was dodging and burning and that kind of wraps up soft light. The next one that we're gonna look at, the next blend mode in this series is overlay. Now overlay is the big brother of soft light. Think of it like this, everything that soft light does, overlay does the same thing, but it amplifies it, it does it more. All right, overlay is the stronger version of soft light. So let's move back to the image of the landscape and you remember that we added a sharpness layer to it, a high pass filter to it. So if you wanna increase the effect of sharpness, click on it and select overlay. Overlay is what? The more stronger brother, the elder brother of soft light. Watch, it's more sharpened. So this is overlay, this is soft light, a little, and this is overlay. So let me make it more clear to you. So let's just delete this and let's add the gradient again and create a new layer, add this gradient and make it overlay, all right? So as you can see, it's doing the same things, but it's going extremes. It is darkening the areas that are black. It is brightening the areas that are white, but it's going way more than soft light. So look at it, look at soft light. It's doing the same thing. The middle is still transparent, but overlay, takes it a step further. See, the middle is still transparent. It's the same as it was before. So that covers all the four important blend modes that you'll ever need to know and that you'll mostly use in Photoshop. But I do remember my promise. The awesome stuff where we use multiple blend modes. But before that, let's learn a couple more blend modes that you might use from time to time. So let's delete it. So the next most important, not most important, sometimes you might use it, is linear light and you will use linear light only while doing frequency separation. Now, I'm not going into frequency separation in this video because I already have a video about it. So go ahead and check it out right here. And next comes, okay, so I talked about linear light, right? So we'll talk about linear light in that video. For now, let's talk about one another blending mode and that is hue and color. Now, these blending modes are used to color stuff in Photoshop. So for example, if you wanted to make uh, the grass is a little more yellower or wanted to have a yellow cast over it. So take a brush, all right, take a color, say yellow, and paint over the grass, create a new layer, don't forget to do that, all right, paint over the grass. The flow is five, let's increase the flow to 100. And this is looking strange now, but watch. Change it to hue. Now, as you can see, the grass has turned a little yellowish. Try changing it to color. It does the same thing, but takes a step ahead. So sometimes hue works in changing colors and sometimes color works in changing colors. So if you wanna change the color of something, these two blend modes are the way to go. So let's look at a few more examples. So if you wanna make her face like green, uh, like Hulk, you can do that. Just paint over her face. Let's change, uh, all right, so it's already soft light. So let's try hue. It's green, let's try color, it's also green. So that's what it does, you get the idea. So this is not a practical usage of it, but 
you understand what I'm trying to say is for color casts and stuff kind of that kind of effects. So that's what I said. You will only use four and these kind of things you can use it. See, if you really want to change color or something, if you really want to selectively edit color, I have a dedicated tutorial on that in that I give you five ways to do that. Five ways to selectively adjust colors. So go ahead and check it out right here or here. All right. So let's go ahead and let's learn the thing that I had promised to you in the beginning, how to use multiple blend modes to leverage creativity. All right. So the first thing that we are going to do, we are going to add a lipstick to this beautiful lady. So create a new layer, then select the color you want. Take the brush, select the color you want, say whatever shade of lipstick you want. Maybe I want this. I like red lipsticks. I don't apply them, but I like it on other people. All right. Click OK. Zoom in and just simply paint over her lips. Let's make, make the brush a little smaller and make sure you don't go beyond the boundaries of the lips. Otherwise things can get worse. Okay. So you can always delete that using eraser or a mask, but let me do that really quickly for you. Make sure you fill in the lips very carefully. All right. Now, at this point, you might think this is looking like a joker, but wait till I change the blending mode. So let's change the blend modes. Now, not one blend mode will work. You need to try out different blend modes. So there's a way to cycle through blend modes and the shortcut is shift plus. So if you press shift and plus, it cycles through different blend modes. But now I'm pressing shift plus, but the blend modes are not changing. Why is it not changing? Because the brush tool is selected. Make sure this tool, the move tool is selected. And then you press shift plus. This changes the blend modes. See, watch. Multiply works a little bit. Color burn works a little bit, but it looks strange. So we know that. Okay, watch. Linear burn also works. All right. So, but to get perfect results, everybody has told you about this. I'm going to tell you something that nobody has ever told you about. All right, let's change the blend mode to multiply. It looks good, but the highlights are gone. The highlights are missing because multiply makes things darker, and not brighter. So here's what you can do. You can right click on it, go to blending options and drag the slider from the right, this below underlying layer slider from the right until you can see the highlights. Now you begin to see highlights. Stop. Stop where you begin to see highlights. Press and hold Alt, click on this. This will separate the sliders and you just separate it. Look, watch. Isn't this amazing? All right, let's take it a little bit to the right and we'll add just a little bit of this. Not too much, just a little bit. Okay, this is cool. Now this has added the highlights, just the highlights, but we want more dimension. We want a little brightness. So what blending mode brightens things, do you remember? screen, right? So let's make a copy of this. To make a copy of this, control or command J and then change the blend mode to screen. But we want this blend mode to be applied to only brighter areas of the lips. So right click and go to blending options and let's just reset this slider to its original position. And this time let's drag slider from the left of the underlying layer so that we don't affect the darker area. So we want these areas to be bright. Press and hold alter option, click on it. It will separate and there you go. Watch, watch, isn't this amazing? Now you can go back to this blending options, blend if. So click on this icon and you can always go ahead and tweak it if you want. If you want to decrease the highlights in case you wanted to do that, I wanted to do that. So click OK. So here we have the lips, watch. The realistic lips. And if you think it's too much, let's group all of them. Control G, select both of them and let's decrease the opacity. But I think total opacity was fine. So that's one of the ways in which you can combine different blend modes to give you the effect that you want. Just remember the functions. Multiply darkens, screen lightens, overlay and soft light deletes everything that's 50% gray. All right. So let's now what we're going to do, we're going to give a little bit of texture to an image. So let's open up the general image that we had in the beginning. And what if you want this image to be at the top of a crumpled paper? So, so to do that, go to file, open and open a textured paper image. So I had this, I guess. All right. So select control A, control C, Control V and let's make it a little bigger. Okay. 
So remember what I told you to enlarge from the center to transform from the center press and hold shift and alt okay press enter. Now to delete all the areas that are white we'll select what? Multiply. As you can see this is looking good but it's not looking realish. Why? Because we are missing out on the highlights. To add highlights what blend mode shall we use? Screen right? So make a duplicate of this and change the blend mode to screen. Now it's not looking that realistic you know why? Because multiply and screen both are combining to give you the whole image together again. We need to have highlights or only selected areas okay. Only the areas of the paper listen to this carefully only the areas of the paper that are bright okay not the underlying layer. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So right click on this go to blending option. And this time instead of dragging the slider of the underlying layer from the left to right, drag the slider of this layer from left to right. Why? Because you want to keep the highlights of the areas that are bright in this layer, in the paper layer, not on the layer beneath it, not on the background layer, right? So drag it all the way to the point where you want to keep the highlights and press and hold alter option, click on this. Let's make it smooth. Okay, let's take it a little to the left. And there you go. That's amazing, isn't it? So there we have the highlights and we can always go ahead and decrease the opacity if we want. Now there's one more interesting thing that you can do. Now highlights are becoming whitish. We don't want the highlights to be white. We want the highlights to be bright. So let's try overlay watch it's looking much more natural so let's try increasing the opacity watch isn't this amazing now of course if you wanted to place this image on a crumpled paper you had to distort displace you could have added a little bit of texture but that's for some other tutorial i know guys that was quite a long tutorial and i apologize for that but i really wanted to go in depth about blending modes and also wanted to show you some examples so you can actually apply apply them in your images all right so that's pretty much wraps up the session for introduction to blend modes all right so if you enjoyed this make sure you give us a thumbs up also make sure you subscribe to our channel don't just subscribe click on that bell button so that you don't miss anything i'll see you guys in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating